Welcome to YourPrimetimeSports.com. I'm Dave Grimm. Alongside me, since for the first time since uh, early in the football season, this right, is right. Bruce Guthrie from the Paragould Daily Press and also A-State Nation. Speaking of A-State, I'm celebrating today. See that right there? Big win last night for the Red Wolves. Yes, it was. So we are about to get underway here uh, at Ridgefield Christian School, where RCS is hosting the Crowley's Ridge Academy Falcons. Falcons. That's right, 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 right. And they're about to tip it off right now. And the reason we're here tonight is because the game we had scheduled Oop. got uh, canceled because Wynn is still playing football. Right, right. Playing so, in the playoffs against Watson Chapel right down the road. And we'll have that score for you later on tonight on our Facebook page. In the meantime... We are underway here, and we've already got a turnover. RCS double dribbles the basketball. So it's scoreless here early. Crowley's Ridge with the ball. Luke Ellis gives over left side to Jonathan Carlisle. Now back to Ellis. Now right side. Lob pass inside, and there's going to be an over-the-back called. He was trying to go up there and get that lob pass, and he climbed the back of Jacob Reeves. Foul called against Jacob Towell. So that's Jacob on Jacob crime right there. Well, you know, give a look. Crowley's Ridge played last night, played an overtime game, so I think fatigue might become a factor here tonight. Had an overtime loss against Buffalo Island Central last night. You were at that game. I was. And we'll probably hear a few details about that game as we progress here tonight. Ridgefield basketball. They finally get the ball in bounds just in time. They pass it up top to Reeves. That's going to be another foul. We already had. That's the third foul of this ball game, and we haven't even gotten a full minute into it yet. Well, it's not very crisp right now, Dave. And, and I don't know if you take fatigue into it right now. We're, we're not even, what, 30. 36 seconds into this. And three fouls already against right. CRA. Could None a, against CRA. Could be a long whistle night. None against Ridgefield so far. Now in the paint, and that's going to be another foul called against Crowley's Ridge. They're trying to drive and uh, look like number three. I don't have you have that right. Number three for uh, that's Jonathan Carlisle stepped in, and I think he is going to be called for the foul. So now four fouls against CRA, still scoreless. Fadeaway jumper is uh, not going to go in, and it's going to be a rebound, battle for the rebound. And finally, no, another CRA foul. I thought that one was going to go against the Warriors, but no. They call it on the red team. That's going to allow Randy McMillan to go to his bench really quickly. Yeah, apparently already in foul trouble is James Scott and Jacob Tau. Back underway we go. Warriors with the basketball. Still scoreless. One minute into this ball game. Seven minutes remaining in the first quarter. Matt Newman. One of two twins on the floor right now. Matt and Andy Newman. And that's Andy with it right now. And he's going to fire the three, and it's going to go in. And now RCS has nice little spot up. first three points of the ball game. Now CRA with the basketball on offense. They haven't spent very much time on this end of the floor so far in this ball game. Keep it on number 14 for CRA. 38 points last night. Towel, three-pointer, good. Wow. Jonah Towel, one of two towels on the team. It's three to three now. Here come the Warriors. First time we have had CRA in basketball this year. We'll have them a few more times. We've had Marmaduke. We've had Rector. Now we've got CRA. And now in the paint, that's going to be a whistle on the floor foul. The shot will not count. They're going to call that against Luke Ellis. You know, I'm going to talk about Ellis a little bit. He had 38 points last night against Buffalo Island Central. He had 32 points in the game before. Wow. So look for him to score and Ellis score in bunches. Ellis is their go-to guy. Hey, an immediate pass inbounds, and it does not go in. Rebounded by CRA. This is Jonah Tao with the basketball. He's going to set up top of the key. Now goes left side to Tyler Mobley. Mobley, skip pass over to Luke Ellis. Ellis drives in, and he is fouled. 
by Ellis, the big man. Ellis is hesitating a little bit tonight. He's not. He's throwing up a couple of fakes from the three-point line. Drove that time. Probably should have shot it from the outside. Caleb Moss charged with the first foul of the ball game. Charged to RCS. First free throw is good. We look for Jacob Tal to, or not Jacob, excuse me, Luke Ellis to score in just about any way possible. Well, he just put two on the board right there to make it 5-3 CRA. So they were held scoreless for so long, now they've scored five in a row to take the lead. Five and a half left first quarter. Ridgefield with the basketball now. Reeves passes it to Dylan Green. Now back up to Reeves. Reeves in the corner. Trying to work it inside. It's batted out of there, and it'll be last touched by Crowley's Ridge. A little battle between uh, teammates. Looks like between brothers. Is that right? 20 uh, and 21. 20 and no, it's Mobley and Tal. Jo Jonah Tal and Tyler Mobley. Yeah, I think the brothers are number 21 and number 5. Okay. So, meanwhile, we've got twins on the other side here, Andy Newman and Matt Newman. And now from the high post, the shot is not going to go in. Battle for the rebound is going to come away to Ellis. Ellis shoves, shoves the guy, no call. He hasn't gotten it across the timeline yet. Finally, he does. That was a very sloppy sequence <laughs> right there, to say the least. Towel with the basketball. The only towel on the floor right now for, well, it's a turnover. Travel with the basketball. Went for the fake pass inside in the low post and shuffled his feet just a little bit. Well, what was, you know what was funny, Dave? That that shove after he lost the ball. He shoved him after he lost the ball. Yeah, and, and no call. So now Ridgefield with the basketball. They are down two, five to three. Well, you see that. We got a scoreboard on the screen this year. <laughs> wow. Blocking, Blocking foul. foul. Yep. Yeah, he didn't get there and get set in time, so they're going to call the foul on Tyler Mobley. One big problem last night was foul trouble, and you see it's already happening to CRA this, uh, in this game. They're already in the bonus, and we aren't even four minutes into this ball game. And the culprit last night was Scott, who was absolutely – he fouled, well, he fouled out in the third quarter. He was the guy that was supposed to guard Buffalo Island Central's go-to guy. That was Austin Pike, and he scored 48 last night. Wow, 48 points. Made both free throws to tie the ball game, five apiece. They're going to shoot free throws for every foul the rest of the way here in the first half, and we're just now approaching the four-minute mark in the first quarter. Once it's again, you can see Ellis. Half. And Ellis just hesitated again from the three-point line, not looking for a shot right away. And that one, that sequence is a bunch of missed shots for CRA, and RCS comes away with a rebound. That three-pointer is good. Taylor. Davidson for Ridgefield makes it eight to five. Camped right out there on the baseline. Backcourt violation. Yep. And things not looking well for CRA here early. Two and three is their record on the season so far. Two and five is the record for RCS. And this is the first conference matchup, first conference game for both of these schools this year. That shot is missed and it's gonna be rebounded by Towel. Ahead it goes to Mobley. Down on the baseline, that shot will not go for Todd Mason, and we've got a whistle and a foul on the rebound. Follow-up by Jonathan Carlisle almost was uh, was dunked and then uh, just kind of jammed by the rim. They haven't got to see a dunk yet this year. There were I two was, last night at CRA. Was one of them a CRA player? Yes. Oh, so we may see one tonight. That's correct. So now that was a foul on the shot, and that sends Jonathan Carlisle to the free throw line for the Falcons. I believe it was Carlisle that actually made the dunk last night. The guy at the line right there? Mm-hmm. Well, he just made a free throw, but so we know he can dunk and we know he can make free throws. Well, then hopefully he can defend and rebound at the same time. Eight to six, make it, nope, missed the second one, rebound, Ridgefield. Plucked out of the sky by Jacob Reeves and we're going the other way. Baseline. Going to kick it back up to the high post, and now they'll reset the offense. Reeves wants to drive in. Instead, drives to the corner. Now, Cole, Cole Williams, and he has it stolen away. Nick Allman comes away with it for the Falcons, and CRA sets up their offense. Three-pointer on the way from the corner, and that one's off the back of the rim. No good for Carlisle. Rebound, RCS. 
There's one of the Newman brothers, and he makes the three. That's Andy Newman. Hello, Newman. I've been waiting all night to say that. <laughs> 249 remaining in the first quarter. It's 11-6 now. Here's a three, and it's Oh, good. yeah. There we go. Tyler Mobley answers the three from Newman. One of these, well, actually, both of these clubs get hot from the from beyond the three-point range. You're not going to only see a lot of numbers in the foul column, but a lot of numbers on the point column. We'll take a minute to remind you as they walk down the floor, our scoreboard on the screen, sponsored by the Big Top Flea Market of Paragool. Great big old huge flea market up in the north end of town. In the paint, that shot's not going to go. He gets his own rebound, clears it back out. Reeves for three. He got it. Ooh, what a nice little recovery by Reeves. Comes and sets his feet and nails the, the, the three-point shot. A 14-9 score now. Back on the other end of the floor with CRA. Working it around, corner shot will not go for Nick Allman, and it's going to be rebounded by Ridgefield. Reeves in the paint, can't get it to go, gets his own board, puts it back up and in. What a nice, no, the fundamental of basketball, follow your own shot, that's exactly what Reeves did, gets in and gets the put back. Timeout called, it's a 30-second timeout, we're going to keep it here for 30-second timeouts. Our next broadcast, you know what? I don't even remember where our next Brooklyn. broadcast is. Brooklyn it's Bearcats. Right. It's Bro uh, Brooklyn at Nettleton. And I believe it's a girls game. I better bring that up so that I'll know what I'm talking about. Well, you know what? There's a problem right there. Where is this? All right, the timeout is over. And we're going to get back underway here. CRA with the basketball. And it is number 21, Towel, bringing it down. Gets it into the corner. And it's picked up. That's a Newman. Newman passes off the glass and in. Nice assist for Newman. And nice score for Cole Williams. Eighteen to nine Ridgefield now. The CRA in trouble right here on the road. An eighteen to nine deficit here in the first quarter. And they just got their uh, another turnover and a foul. So if it's a foul, we're gonna go to the other end of the floor and shoot the one and one. Or was it an offensive foul? It was foul? an offensive okay, foul. Okay, that doesn't result in free throws. With 120 left here in the first quarter. So we were talking about the uh, next game, and I'm going to look that up as we watch Ridgefield work the ball around the horn here. Now they work it inside. Shot is off the glass and in. That's been there all night long, getting, being able to drive, doing the curl. Bounce pass inside underneath the basket for the easy layup. Landon Cruz. Makes the bucket, makes it 20 to 9. And I should probably, there yeah, we go. And now, three pointer on the way, it's not going to go. And rebound RCS. Warriors Rich. basketball. Richfield looking to be patient, trying to get the last shot of the first quarter. They're just going to slow it down all the way now. This is Newman with the basketball, working one-on-one -on -one against Towel. That's Andy Newman, that is, one of two Newmans. Now they work it down low, shot off the glass, and it will not go. He gets his own rebound, battles, needs help, clears it back up to the top. Now Newman for three. Nope, won't go this time. And it goes out of bounds, last touch by Richfield. Good sequence right up there until the end, and then it just could not get the basket to fall. Four seconds left in this first quarter. Very quickly, they're going to have to, well, they're not even paying attention to the clock. They don't know that they don't have enough time. They get it off at the buzzer. Oh. It's not going to go. At the end of the first quarter, it's 20-9. to nine. Ridgefield leading CRA. We'll take a break and be back on your primetimesports.com. You get big time savings and hometown service. Always a bit Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram.
Retirement? It's never looked so good. Welcome to Chateau on the Ridge Assisted Living in Paragould, Arkansas. Say hello to fine dining and down home living, where around the clock security and peace of mind are always at your fingertips. And front row seats to the best shows, they're included. We call it Chateau on the Ridge. You can call it home. Call or visit today to get the whole scoop. All right, welcome back. It's 20 to 9. Ridgefield leading Crowley's Ridge. CRA gets the ball to start the second quarter. Down 11 in this opening conference game for both teams. CRA, if CRA is going to be able to come back, they're going to have to shoot better. They're shooting way, way too many threes right now. Long two-pointer. That one's not going to go in either. And it's rebounded by Ridgefield. They're going the other way fast. The transition game is what's keeping Ridgefield out in front of CRA because they make their way back down the floor fast. Well, you got to know that, that they probably understand that CRA played an overtime game last night and very emotionally draining overtime game last night. Whistle and a foul, and we're going to see two shots on that one. It is uh, number 20, Tyler Mobley, committing the foul. And Jacob Reeves. Well, they're going to say it was on the floor. It's a one and one. It's not Reeves shooting it. It's Cole Williams. One and one here. And it's the final one and one. It's team foul number nine. And it's an air ball out of bounds. It'll be CRA basketball. You can keep your eye on how, many, you know, how long it's going to take for these guys to just start grabbing those shorts at the free throw line when they're, when they're waiting. It looks like a couple of them are already doing it. Now, CRA basketball. The other towel on the floor, that is Jacob Towel, and whistling a foul against Ridgefield. That's only team foul number three against Ridgefield, while CRA has nine fouls called on them. I think that's probably going to be a, a bone of contention with uh, head coach Royce McMillan over there at CRA's bench. He's probably going to say something about that the first chance he gets. And Ellis from the paint, got it to go. That's what he's got to do right there. Now it's a nine-point game, back to a single-digit deficit. Seven minutes to play in the half. That one is out of bounds, last touched by Ridgefield. They turn that one over. It's Crowley's Ridge basketball. They're trying to build some momentum here all and of a sudden. And CRA is going to have to use Luke Ellis and get him into driving and get him to keep from hesitating on his shot and on his drives. He's hesitating and is making his decisions. And that shot's not going to go for the other towel, Jacob Towel. We've got a whistle and a foul, and I believe Towel will shoot two free throws. That's correct. You see the difference right now between first quarter, uh, quarter number one and quarter number two. They're not shooting so many from outside the arc. They're actually trying to get to the basket, draw fouls, and shoot foul shots. Made the first one, makes it an eight-point game. One more pending. Missed that one off the back of the rim. Rebound battle for, and well, Ridgefield comes away with it. And Reeves gets fouled on the way back to the other end. That was legitimate because he comes in and drives at a clear lane of the basket, and all the, all the CRA defender could do was stand in and foul. So now that's team foul number 10. We're going to see two free throws every time Ridgefield gets fouled for the next six minutes, 45 seconds. CRA just not getting back on defense, and Ridgefield taking advantage of it. And that uh, free throw is good and makes the score inverted, 21 to 12. Read it backwards or forwards the same way. Palindromial. That's right. He messed that up with the second free throw. Yeah, well. 22-12. Now in the paint, CRA shot will nice. go up and Ian Carlisle split the defenders and nobody stepped up to get him. Nice little knife. Let's look at the replay on that. It's too late. We couldn't get to it in time. That was a nice. I'm going to fix that replay time a little bit better. Let's fix that right there, and we'll get. It went too quick. We're on a 30-second timeout. It's too, it's too late. It's 30-second timeout, and I will now tell you what the uh, game is that we will be broadcasting on today. We've got a double header, girls and boys. Double dip. Brooklyn, or Nettleton hosting the Brooklyn Bearcats. Nettleton, one of the teams we cover. So we'll be going into Jonesboro to cover that cross-county rivalry. They're right up the street from each other. It ought to be a big game. Girls and boys, live on your primetimesports.com. It'll be Tuesday night. 
Back underway here. Ridgefield with the basketball up by eight. Newman can't get this one to go. Rebound CRA. And now they are applying pressure off the missed shot, but CRA gets it across. Ellis in and out no good on the three-pointer. Rebound Ridgefield. Back and forth we go. In the paint, the shot is up off the glass. Oh, end. so nice. Ellis coming and tried to set up for the charge, and he just went right around him and went in for the layup. That was Reeves on the layup. Makes it a 10-point ball game again, 24 to 14. Now a three-pointer on the way, and it's not going to go for Carlisle. It's rebounded by Ridgefield. Newman lobs it inside to the wrong color jersey, but it is out of bounds. Last touch by CRA. CRA trying to assert themselves on the defensive end, trying to get some transition themselves, and they're just going to have to shoot better. That's just all there is to it. They're going to have to stay out of foul trouble, which is they've not been able to do, and they're going to shoot better on the offensive end. That shot off the glass and in immediately off the inbound pass. Dylan Green makes it 26-14. Mobley gambles on defense and loses. Now into the corner it goes. Now Mobley drives in, puts it up. It's not going to go. Rebound Ridgefield. Bad, if it wasn't for bad luck, CRA wouldn't have any at this point. Now that he just, man, they just the up the gut. Uh, five minutes here left to play. 5.05 to be precise in the second quarter. Something in the CRA defense is that RCS is being able to just knife through time after time after time for the easy basket. Inbounding the basketball will be Nick Allman for the Falcons. He does. He gets it in the corner. Ellis for three. Way short. It looked like a pass to me. What do you think? It was blocked, actually. It was tipped at the uh, at the point where he shot it and fell right do into you, the do arms you, do of... Do you call uh, that a shot or do you give Ellis an assist to Carlisle? Uh, <laughs> I think you get an offensive rebound and a putback to Carlisle is what you get. 28-16 the score. Now we've got a charge called against Ridgefield Christian. Four minutes, 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Team foul number six, that's it. So now every foul that Ridgefield commits will result in free throws for CRA. Ellis with it on the left wing. Brings it back to the top. Now hands off to Carlisle. Back to Ellis. Ellis wants to drive. He puts it up from the low block. It's going to roll in. Oh, wow. Nice little jumper there. And you notice every time Ellis gets the ball, there's at least two defenders dogging him. On yeah. one sequence, there was three. Oh, he yep, traveled yep. with the basketball. Nice defense by Ellis. And we'll, look, we'll finally use our replay here. Ellis steps right up on the man and forces him to pick up that pivot foot. Lost control of the basketball momentarily and tried to recover with it and then just shuffled his foot. I think he might have lifted his toe. Well, now CRA with the basketball. Down 10. Four minutes left in the half. Ellis, top of the key. If anybody's going to get them back in it, it's going to be Ellis, but he can't get that three-pointer to drop, and it's going to be rebounded by Reeves. Warriors Ellis. basketball. Free throw line jumper. In and out, no good, but a foul. And a technical foul called. He got up complaining about that. James Scott is going to get teed up. That's something that's plagued CRA the last couple of games. They had two technical fouls last night. One actually was for hanging on the rim when uh, when Carlisle hung on the rim, and the other one was for such a, a, a protesting call like that that the kid actually uh, slapped the floor. Well, on this particular call, James Scott got up and made a face. He didn't say anything. He just made a, a, a disagreeing face with the referee's call, and the referee is going to have none of that. So it results in a technical foul. We're going to see four free throws here. Two for the foul, two for the technical foul, and then Ridgefield will get the ball back. Well, I think it's also important to note that two of the referees on the floor tonight were on the floor last night at CRA and, and issued those two technical fouls as well. So, I mean, it's just... And James Scott is a sophomore. 
And like I said, he is, he is prone to being in foul trouble. That's probably his third foul right now. On the I line. Believe. On Jacob Showalter, first time we've called his name out tonight. He misses the first free throw. He is shooting the foul free throws. Then we'll see the technical foul free throws. He missed both of those. So now they're going to take him off the line. They don't want him shooting the technical foul free throws. And they are going to put up there on the line Taylor Davidson. Well, he was in for the injured. He shot for the injured player who, who came off the floor briefly. Well, they probably could have chosen a better free throw shooter. <laughs> I think they probably thought he was better than that. I think they said he has to stay he in now. He has to stay in, yeah. Until the last, right before the last free throw, and then they can sub him in. But he just shot his free throw. No, they won't even sub down. him in then. They'll sub him in after both free throws because these are technical free throws, and they're going to okay. get the ball back. Right. He makes that one to make it 29-18. One more pending. 348 remaining here in the first half. So they made one of four free throws. They could have put a serious dagger into CRA. It would have been four a 14-point lead. And instead they only make one. But they do get the basketball. It could have been a six-point possession. So now Davidson will inbound the basketball. Waiting on subs to get in and get situated for the Warriors. This is Dylan Green checking back into the ball game. Inbound pass goes to Andy Newman, and we're back underway. One thing that has uh, that the Warriors have done is keep Luke Ellis in check tonight. And they've been able to capitalize on the offensive end. They're trying to find a hole in the CRA defense. Finally, they dump it inside. That shot is going to be a result in another foul. That was Dylan Green trying to take it to the rack. And he will shoot two. Holes in the, in the CRA defense haven't been hard to find. I think what's even been harder is to find for CRA is moving feet on defense because that's a been, been the problem so far tonight. They've not been able to move their feet on defense. First free throw is on the way and good for Dylan Green. 326 remaining here in the first half. 12-point lead. One more free throw pending for Green. And... It's off the back of the rim, no good. Rebound, battle for offensive board. Put back up off the glass. It's not going to go. Out of bounds, last touch by the white jersey. Just a bad first half for CRA tonight. I mean, just not being able to, to defend well on, on, on this end and then allowing a, a rebound on a free throw. It's going to get Randy McMillan in their ear at halftime. Royce McMillan. Royce McMillan, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, he's a, he's a guest frequently on the show. I won't tell him you messed up his name. <laughs> I probably did it in the paper today. No, you did not. <laughs> no, Mike McKinney wouldn't allow that to happen. No, he would have caught it. We got a whistle and a foul on the floor against RCS. One and one now for Jonah Towell. Got it. It just looks as if they're just out of sync. I mean, they're just, even at the free throw line, you can tell. I mean, he's, he's gasping for air right before he puts it up. They're, they're, they're tired. Well, they've got a second half to try and make adjustments. They're only down 11. And now, well, that one's they got to hit the go. free throws, though. So they're at the point right now they have to hit every free throw they get. RCS basketball. In the paint it goes. The shot is off the glass and in for Dylan nice. Green. Nice turnaround. It's looking too easy so far. 32 to 19. It's looking way too easy for RCS. Falcon basketball. In the corner it goes to Allman. He tries to lob it inside. Almost picked off, but our CRA recovers. Now driving in is Carlisle, and he's going to get fouled on the floor. And he'll shoot a one and one with 235 remaining in this half. What you know, if you had to watch this game and you didn't have the sound or anything on there, and you're just kind of watching it, what would you think? You would think one word, you would think energy. No in, lots of energy in white, no energy in maroon. Well, that overtime game last night, you keep hitting on it. Fatigue on the part of CRA. And you can tell it in their shots. Their shots are falling short. Free throw was no good. Here comes Ridgefield. Three-pointer on the way. Won't go for Newman. Offensive board is going to be out of bounds. Let's see. They're going to say it's last touch by CRA. And Coach McMillan disagrees, and he gets it his way. The call is overturned. Wow. You don't hardly see that. Now, you, what, what I did notice on the on the rebound was Mason, the guard there, blocked out. He huh. actually put a rump in somebody, and he blocked out, and that caused that turnover. Carlisle from the paint. Carlisle traveled. 
Mental mistakes. You got to go right back. I mean, you get a good thing going, and you come in, you can't capitalize on the offensive end. 2-12 now and counting, remaining in this first half. Ridgefield trying to build on a 13-point lead. Andy Newman. Now Green. Now inside. Wow. That one's not going to go. Offensive board put back up. Cruz can't get it twice. And it's rebounded by CRA. Pulled down by Carlisle. And CRA makes their way to the other end. Now three-pointer on the way. That one is short for Towel. And it's rebounded by Ridgefield. Back the other way we go. Towel gets the ball, looks down to make sure he's behind the three-point line, and it throws off the rhythm of his shot. 90 seconds remaining here in the first half. Newman to Newman. Now Green. Now Davidson tries to throw it inside. It's batted out of bounds. It's lost out of bounds. It'll be Crowley's Ridge basketball. One of the few mistakes on the offensive end by Ridgefield Christian. These are two teams in the three single way conference. This is a, their first conference game of the 12-13 season. Uh huh. And the only two private schools in the conference. Rest of them are public schools. CRA working the ball around the horn. We've got a call, a offensive foul called against Carlisle. Now, I'm not even sure. I, you had to I didn't see throw a replay on that one. It was away from the basketball, it looked like. And it just, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the referee saw. One minute to play in the half. And at halftime, folks, we'll be taking a break. We will uh, fix the camera on the court and whatever activity goes on down there at halftime, you'll see it right here on your primetime sports. Whistle and a foul. Whoa, two players go to the floor. They seem to collapse after the foul was called. And hopping up, limping just a little bit is Taylor Davidson. That's He'll, an ankle. He will be the one who gets to shoot. Now he's limping he's more. He's not going to be able to shoot. He's turned his ankle. I know what that feels like. That does not feel good. Well, he's going to have to go he's to the bench. They're going to have to send in another shooter. And it will be number 23, Chris Beck entering the ball game. So this is the second time in this game that Ridgefield has had to send in a free throw shooter for the injured player that was scheduled to shoot the free throw. It's probably, the probably the only thing that's going wrong for Ridgefield Christian tonight. 33-19, we have 45 seconds remaining in the first half. That second one was, well, he just kind of slung, slung it up, up there, there right? yeah, and it went in. But now he's got to go play defense, so there, there you go. CRA basketball. They'd like to break 20 points before the half. Mobley, now they work it in the corner. Now back up to Mobley. You notice conspicuously absent is Luke Scott. Or Luke and Ellis, excuse me. Luke Ellis Luke and Ellis. James Scott. And James Scott. We've got a foul called, and we're going to see free throws now for Carlisle. And this is our own cameraman's nephew, right? Yeah, our, he's not here with us tonight. Our normal cameraman, Brett Carlisle. That's his nephew down there. Wow. Jonathan Carlisle makes the first free throw, makes it 20 points up there on the board for CRA. Got them both. 34-21, we're down to 20 seconds remaining in this half. Pressure defense all of a sudden by CRA. Especially on the ball. Five seconds remaining, they work it inside. Shot goes up and in with what three nice seconds move. left. And let's look at that last shot on the instant replay as we go to halftime. Faked it once, went up with it, and in. And that makes the score 36 to 21 at halftime. Now, we will take a break. And uh, there may be some activity. Cheerleaders looking like they may be coming down. So uh, we're going to take a break. We'll leave one mic on so that you can hear what's going on. And we'll be back 
for the second half on your primetimesports.com.
Welcome back to your primetime sports.com. Second half about to get underway. 36 21, big 15 point lead, lead for Ridgefield Christian over its conference rival, Crowley's Ridge Falcons. And we're about to get this half underway. <clears throat> Ridgefield will get the ball to start the second half. Reeves dribbles in himself, takes it to the rack, gets the bucket and the foul. So count the bucket, it's 38-21, and he's gonna get to shoot the freebie. And he got it. That was a quick half time. Eight minute and a half. They weren't playing around, were they? Mm -mm. <clears throat> that one's picked off inside. Well, still loose, and now they come back up with it. And a foul is going to be called. Going to be a little cheap foul against number 35, uh, Caleb Moss. Trying to, get the, trying to get the block. So now shooting free throws is Jacob Towel for the Falcons. Got it. What we need to do, we'll scoot this chair up so you can scoot in here a little way. Yeah, that's all. Scoot it all the way up. it. He missed the second one. It's 39 22, rebounded by the Warriors. This won't be the first time we'll have CRA on this year. We've got a couple of games scheduled. That wow. Weird play right there. Ellis comes up with it, and he goes the length of the floor and puts it off the glass and in. That's exactly what has to happen for CRA for them to come back into this game. Now one goes to the other end and wouldn't go for Reeves, and CRA comes down with a rebound. In the corner, it goes to Mason. Now back up top. Stolen away. RCS getting into the passing lanes. Deflecting basketballs, disrupting timing. Long three, good. He got he, it. He just slings that thing up there. That's back for three. And we've got another one of those, what did you say they were again, pal palindromes? Yes, a palindromial Palindromial score, 42-24. <laughs> and now three-pointer will not go. He's going to get the shoot three free throws. That's Ellis. And Ellis looking a lot more assertive on the offensive end. His decision making a little more crisp, no, no hesitation. He's either going to shoot a th shoot a three or he's going to drive the basket. That time he shot, and it's going to pay off at the line. Missed the first one. That's fatigue. I'm telling you, coming up and coming up short, they're not bending their knees. It's not football, Clifton. You can barely hear Clifton on my microphone trying to use his football terminology in this basketball game. Missed two free throws. <clears throat> and the woes of Lou Gellis continue. One more. Got it. Rolled in. 42-25. Six minutes, 35 seconds here remaining in the third. Now Reeves to Newman. Skip pass over to back. Back to Reeves. I want to see him. There he goes. Throw it. Oh, oh, couldn't get that one to go off I the back of the way rim. he shoots. <laughs> it's like a pistol Pete. There you go. I mean, he just wham. Swing it up there. He shoots it like pistol Pete Maravich. And he's been successful till that shot. He shot both his free throws that way, and then he right. hit that three-pointer that way. Right. So it's out-of-bounds play here. Ellis looking for somebody to get it into. Finally finds Towel. That three-pointer won't go. And it's rebounded by Reeves ahead to Newman. Newman off the glass and in on the fast break. Well, I'll tell you what. They are just running right by the CRA Falcons. Andy Newman makes it 44-25. Uh, and reminder, we get to 30 points at the fourth quarter. That ceases the clock to stop. Well, we are at 19 now. That shot wouldn't go. It's rebounded by Ridgefield. Going back the other way again. Newman. Now Reeves. And there's Beck. Beck now running the offense. Calls out 
the play. And passes left side to Green. Into the corner. Reeves for three. Won't go this time. And it's going to be rebounded by the Falcons. Going the other way fast is Jacob Tau. Length of the floor. Tau puts it up. He is fouled. He'll go the line to shoot a couple. I'll tell you what, that was a very generous block call by the referee. The, the, the defender looked like he was pretty set in that, in that spot. That was, I mean, I'm talking about the RCS right. defender. Looked like he was pretty set. Tau very aggressive from one end of the floor to the other, and that's what CRA is going to need if they're going to get back in this ball game. So they've lacked all night. And he makes the free throw to make the lead 18. 5.20 remaining in the third. Missed that second one, and it's rebounded by Ridgefield. And I tell you, Dave, it's not, and, and not to beat a fatigued horse, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> Those shots are coming out the front of that rim. A foul inside will result in more free throws. This time Dylan Green will do the honors. And luckily the whistles aren't coming as fast in this half as they did the last no, half. Not on the same pace that we were in the first half. Three fouls for Ridgefield, two against CRA here in the third. Free throw is short. Ridgefield handling, handling their business for the most part. Very efficient, shooting free throws well up until that point. <clears throat> Here's the second free throw by Green. It's good. Well, why is he shooting three? Was Must he have had a lane violation in the first one. Uh, I see. So that wiped away the first attempt. So it's 26 to 45. Count them both. 26 46. That's a Newman stepping in front of that pass. Yeah, and it's going the other way. Reeves kicks it in the corner to Williams. Now inside it goes off the All rest and night in. long. That's Green. He makes it a 22-point ball game, the largest lead of the night. Green has been a monster inside. Doesn't have a whole lot of size, but has the step. Has had to step on his defender all night long. Now we've got another foul. Was he on the floor or was he shooting? We'll find out right now. They'll say he was on the floor. They'll inbound the basketball underneath their own basket. And the pass goes up top to Mason. Mason fires it up from the high post. It will not go, and it's rebounded by Reeves going back the other way. Idea was good. Execution not there. Newman for three. It won't go. Gets his own rebound and steps out of bounds with it. Good hustle by Andy Newman. Can't gripe about that right there. Even though he was out of bounds, he just he tried to take it away from, from his guy. CRA, a sub coming in. Uh, Towel will sit down, and Nick Allman will check back in. And Allman gets the inbound pass. Gives back to Ellis. Ellis going to run things for a while. Now Allman. Now Mason throws it inside, and there is a foul. Team foul number five against the Warriors. He tried to run the ball into Carlisle, and they collapsed down on him in the post. Inbound all the way back up top to Carlisle. Now Ellis in the corner, wants to drive in. In traffic, he puts it up in the paint and can't get it to drop. Offensive tries twice. They tried to put it back up and in, still couldn't get it to go. Beck comes away with the rebound for the Warriors. Reeves drives the baseline, kicks it all the way back up to Newman for three. Wow. Perfectly executed drive on the baseline and a kick out to Newman, and he drains the tray. 51-26. That's picked off by Beck. We're going back the other way. Boy, how, how, how much has Beck grown up in the last uh, quarter and a half? From bench player to designated shooter, now the point man. Three second in the lane violation called against Dylan Green. It is a 25-point ball game, so you might have had the right idea when you said that this might get to a 30-point deficit because it, it seems to be aiming in that direction. Headed there on a fast train right now. 337 remaining here in the third. You ever wondered, as a coach, do you just look at a game like this and know that, that your players are just 
physically whipped, and they didn't any look it. And they don't even have, you know, there we go. The three. There nice we go. job by Ellis. But, you know, not only are they fatigued from last night, but their bench is not very deep either. They, they don't wasn't have a big roster. Right, and, and it's nine, ten guys tonight. It was only eight last night. 30, uh, 51 to 29. Ridgefield leads back for three. Love that. And a foul away from the shot. It's team foul number three against CRA. That was away from the ball, but called on CRA, so Ridgefield will retain possession. And they get it into green. Now up top to Matt Newman, back to Reeves in the corner. And that's, that's going to be a, be a backcourt. Back yep. Bad pass into the backcourt. You know, Dave, I, I kind of, and it's none of my business, but, you know, I kind of take issue with the score. Now, I've had some scoreboard issues this season in football, but they don't put uh, the player who. Uh, they're, they're not putting it on the scoreboard yet. Putting, yeah, some places they do. Most places they actually do. Here they're not doing it tonight. They allow you to keep up with the team fouls, but not with who has the fouls and how many they have. Well, maybe one of these days we'll be able to hire a stat man to do that for us. Ellis from the free throw line got the jumper. He's warming up. And he cuts the lead back to 20. Two and a half left in the third. Reeves to Williams. Now in the paint it goes. They kick it back out. Newman for three. It's not going to go this time. Oh, oh, oh. Offensive foul on the rebound. Called against Green. And the other side of the gym wants an over-the-back call. Well, and Ellis took one right in the chops over there. Or, uh, yeah, an over-the-back call. They, they don't get their way. Actually, it's this side of the gym. We're on the home side of the gym, believe it or not. If Ellis flopped, he didn't flop much because he took one right in the chops. And they're looking at the scorebook. It may be... I don't know what the uh, the issue is at this time. They're having a meeting at the scorer's table. It may be about how many fouls a certain player has. Well, the meeting is between Coach McMillan. That would make me wonder that because McMillan may be protesting why somebody, if they fouled out or not. A technical foul called on number 32 against CRA. It was... Uh, an illegal substitution, perhaps. Or he may not be in the book. Will Toller, who is in the game for the first time, and I believe here's what the call is. Will Toller is not in the official scorebook, and that's why they call that's it a That's a big foul. mistake. That's a big mistake. Free throw good for Jacob Reeves. Makes it 52 to 31 on the technical, and they're going to get the ball back. So now they go ahead and they put Toller in the book after the fact so that he can play. But he wasn't in there initially, and that results in a technical foul. That's his second technical, fi technical foul in two nights, and this one wasn't even really his fault. Newman, Matt Newman that is, kicks it back up top to Reed. Now... They're working it around on that side of the floor. Now Andy Newman with the ball on the left side. Skip pass to his Dangerous brother, Matt. Pass. Down low it goes. Green in traffic is fouled. And, and he went to the floor hard. And it's Toller who stepped in front of that pass and consequently knocked out his, uh, his man over there. Green gets up, shaken, but not stirred. He's staying in the ball game. That foul was on the floor, literally. Yes, it was. So they'll inbound the basketball <clears throat> underneath their own basket. Williams will do the honors. Looking for an open man. Hasn't found one yet. Very close to a five-second call. And that's what it they is. They call it. That's right. Not only very close, but right on the money. No, wait a minute. A timeout was Oh, called. wow. Wow. A 30 second. It looked to me like the ref was pointing towards this end of the floor. He, he granted the timeout. So, tonight, as most people know, our 5A East people know, right. there are four 5A East teams in action tonight in the high school football playoffs. 
win Batesville, Forest City, and BB. Right. And we are going to have those scores posted on our Facebook and Twitter feeds just as soon as we can get them for you. BB is at Camden Harmon or Camden Fairview. Uh, Forest City is at Whitehall. And then you have Wynn hosting Watson Chapel. And Batesville is hosting... My elementary alma mater, Hot Springs Lakeside. Ah, uh, yes. A Hot Springs Lakeside team that hung 34 points in the first half on Sylvan Hills in week two, the week of the uh, of the torrential downpours yeah. that, uh, the state. And that game didn't even count. Didn't count. My goodness. Back underway here. Matt Newman kicks it in the corner to his brother Andy. Now up top it goes to Reed. Inside it goes. Green couldn't get it. It's out of bounds. Oh, a good hustle by Toller. Last touch by a white jersey. Toller did a somersault down there. Sure did. Rolled right over to right over the out of bounds line. He says, "I'll see your technical foul with the, with the <laughs> hustle play." How about that? Well, you know that totally wasn't Toller's fault on that. Yeah, absolutely foul. was not. But it counts against his foul total. That's correct. And there it's out of bounds again. Last touch by a white jersey. CRA basketball. We're down to 123 remaining here in the third. Still a 22-point deficit. Ellis in traffic. Drives through. Puts it up and in. Wow. Nice little juke move. Splits the defender and does the up and under from the side of the goal. Go ahead and say it, Clifton. You know you want to. That was a jig jag jelly one. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there we go. And meanwhile, we got a foul, and it's Reeves going the line for the Warriors. And while Luke Ellis has not had the game, and CRA has not had the game they they uh, they expected, Ellis has single-handedly kept this from a, being a mercy rule game. Missed the first free throw. Yeah, Ellis is seven points this. in yep. this quarter. <clears throat> got the second one. Back to a 21-point deficit with 70 seconds remaining. In the third. Allman. Skip pass now. Down low it goes. Shot up and in on the baseline from Mason. Nice work. Good ball movement. 50 seconds remaining in the quarter. It's a 19-point ball game. Reeves. Pass. What a weird pass. Now a three-pointer on the way, won't go, and it's rebounded by CRA. Reeves with the baseline drive, and instead of shooting the ball at the height of his jump, he kicks it out to the left wing. Picked off inside by Andy Newman. Down under 30, 25 seconds left in the third quarter. Newman slowing it up with 20 seconds left. They're going to hold for one shot. 12 seconds, they'll pull the trigger any time. Reeves, eight seconds. Matt Newman, baseline jumper. In and out, no good. Offensive, put back at the oh, buzzer, goes in. Green gives the, makes the lead 21 at the buzzer, 56-35. We are gonna take a one minute break and be back on your primetimesports.com. First National Bank has created memories, starting new relationships, handing over keys and responsibilities, planning for the future, and building foundations, realizing dreams and destinations, sharing a lifetime of memories. First National Bank. Do you need insurance? If the answer is yes, let Chris Robinson and his staff at Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency handle your needs. Whether it's auto, life, business, or planning for your retirement, Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency is ready to serve you and your family. Come by Chris Robinson Insurance Agency, 1211 West Court Street in Paragould. And welcome back to your primetimesports.com. Fourth quarter underway right now. Ridgefield basketball. Back in the corner. Up top it goes. Now right wing. They're just working it around faster than I can say where the ball is. 
Luckily they can see. Yes, for so long they could only hear. And now we're television. And now while you watch them work it's the ball a stall around. game. Yeah, it's a stall game. They're running clock. Well, while they do that, I'll tell you that uh, Ridgefield Christian, we, we called them yesterday, told them we were coming as a replacement game. And there's a foul. And Caleb Moss will go the line. So I called them yesterday, told them, listen, we need a game because our game got canceled. We're going to use you guys. And they've never had television here before, have Right. They? No, no. They built us. A, uh, it's a, a perch. Box. It's a perch. Yeah, yeah, up here to broadcast from. I mean, they built it today, and we want to thank them for that. And they said, well, we've been needing to build one anyway, so I'm glad well, they did. And now how smart is it because they have this. There's power source here. Mm -hmm. It's it's very sturdy. I mean, it's. I mean, you could just hang on. I mean, it's so not going to shake in the camera. <laughs> 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 That's funny. So they're working on a sub situation here. Apparently, uh, I don't know why it took them so long to get the sub in, but we, we've killed the time. We have done it. And another way to kill time is to tell you that our scoreboard is brought to you by the big top flea market in Paragould, north side of town there. Go by and see them. That free throw does not go in for Moss. He's still got another one coming. It's a 21-point deficit. Now another sub checking in for CRA. It is Mobley checking back into the ball game. Everything has gone pretty much the way that Ridgefield Christian wanted to go tonight. They're up 21 points now, 22 points. Very efficient with the basketball, and CRA has just looked out of sync all night long. So it is 57 to 35, and here come the Falcons. That by all appearances, will suffer their first conference loss of the season in their opener. <clears throat> Turned over again. Beck came away with it. And they'll throw it down low, and Moss can't get it. it. Yeah, it was wide open. It was a gimme, and he couldn't get it to go. Sometimes those are the hardest ones to make. He just couldn't believe he was that wide open. That one won't go for number five, Jacob Towell, and it's rebounded by Ridgefield. Only time we'll have Ridgefield on this year, but we sure do appreciate him for making us feel so welcome. Beck works it inside. There's the shot in the paint, off the glass and in. He was wide open too. That was Cole Williams. And they are trying to get to that 30 point margin. 59-35 now. That shot's not gonna go in. Mobley puts it back up and in. 59-37. You want to recognize Chris Beck. I mean, he has been, he came in clutch later man. in the game. He is just pretty much a, a designated shooter and has done nothing but play great basketball since he's been in. He's, he's gotten several steals as well. I think he's earned a letter just here tonight. In the paint, Matt. Oh, yeah, with the basketball, yeah, yeah. Trying to get a little fancy. By, well, they can afford to. Yeah, they're uh, with 22 the 20, 22 point lead, right. And apparently, they've changed the scoreboard for some reason. It's 58-37 now. I don't know why. But they've made some kind of an alteration. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go with it here on our scoreboard as well. We're gonna reset. I'll show you how to do that. We go in here, and we reset. Uh, okay. Okay. I don't know why. But it matters not. It's a 19 point lead. No, uh, sorry, 21. 21 point lead. Backcourt by yep. Barely, but it was. Heel on the line. <clears throat> well, the ball went across. Just on the corner. Well, the if you're standing, I don't know about this. If you're standing on this side, you, you cannot it's like out of bounds, man. Okay. It's just like out of bounds. I got you. That shot goes up and in for Moss. 60 to 37. And we have not done, I'll tell you this in just a second. As this shot from the paint goes up and will not go in. Moss throws oh. it to the wrong color jersey. Ellis comes away with it. Ellis dribbles off his own foot. A foul is going to be called. We have done uh, three different basketball broadcasts. And we have not done a basketball broadcast so far this year where they haven't had some kind of mess up on the scoreboard as to who has how many points. Well, maybe it's you, dude. It, yeah, I don't know. 
But they've had to they've had to adjust the scoring at every single basketball broadcast we have done so far this year. Front end of the one and one would not go for Ellis, and Richfield comes away with the rebound. I think McMillan is going to have to put this game just in the tank. I'll give you another stat here in just a second. Well, they're going to work it around for a while, so I'll give you the stat now. This is the third time that CRA has been on your primetime sports. Twice on radio last year, once on TV this year. That's an, a big offer. They haven't won a game that we have broadcast for them. I don't think they want to see you anymore. Yeah, they may not let us come broadcast. We've got two more on the schedule. They may tell us to stay home. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> At least for you. Yeah, thanks. I don't know about that. Uh, yeah, no, we had them last year at Wiener and at right. Piggott. They lost both of those, and they're on the way to that here at Ridgefield Christian. That free throw would not go. CRA comes away with a rebound. Ellis for three off the back of the rim, no good. Offensive put back, that's not going to go. Another offensive board. He got it to go, and he drew the foul. Nice play right there for Jacob Tau. You know, I think that's the first and one for CRA it all is. night long. You're right. So that makes it 21 points, and he's going to try and make it 20 points with four and a half to play. Moss sits down. And Heath Schatzer, first time we've called his name out tonight, checks into the ball game. Schatzer, S-H-A-T-Z-E-R, Schatzer. That's a cool name. That is pretty cool. We get cool names here and there all the time. What was that one? I think Newman's a pretty cool name. We get two of them. For, for uh, the, the guy from Marmaduke that I like so much his name, I can't remember it now. I couldn't, I couldn't pronounce the kicker for Batesville's name. Neither could anybody else. Nobody else. I don't even think he can pronounce his own name. Working it around here. That's why we're we're killing time just like they are. Well, you know, the uh, the PA announcer at Green County Tech called him Q. Yeah. Schatzer takes it to the rack and gets fouled. So Schatzer. Schatzer. Boy, gotta, that's you, the way you got to say it. Schatzer. 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 No, we're not going to say it like that. We, uh, I wish I could remember that Marmaduke player's name that I like so much. We're going to have him on again soon, so. Well, there are two Winberries on there. There's a Reagans. There's. He's a hmm. bench player. Ah. Uh. Hmm. 344 remaining in this one. And Boy, Schatzer I, will shoot. The Greyhounds uh, had, a, had a rough night the other night. Four points in the entire second half. No, no shots. Oh, wow. All four free throws. Two in the third quarter, two in the fourth quarter. 61-39 after that free throw. Another one pending. 0 for 16 from the field in the, is, in the second half. That's the definition of a bad night. Well, and I tell you what, it, uh, <laughs> Steve Ritchie was not, uh, was not a happy camper after that game was over with. Made both free throws. And now it's CRA basketball. They're trying to keep it from going to 30. They've done a fairly decent job of that. That's the only thing they've done well tonight is keep it from going to 30. Well, the seven points in the third quarter. You look, you, you, if Luke uh, Ellis doesn't score those seven points, that's where we're at. And CRA goes back to the free throw line. Jake, uh, Jonah Towel, excuse me. Stepping up to the free throw line. The last thing was Bolt. Oh. Okay, 62-39, still the score. Ridgefield basketball. Wow, he got rid of that just in time. Before How did he, he keep traveled. his pivot foot on the floor? That thing was glued, man, with stick em. And that shot is not going to go in for Jacob Showalter. Rebounded by CRA. He got his own shot and tried again, just didn't didn't fall. The subs are in. There's still a Newman in the ball game, but there's a the, the, the RCS subs are in. And number three, boy, I tell you what, Trenton Mullins, who just came in for Ridgefield, he's a little feller. He is a little feller. Here is Jonah Towel at the line. 
and got the first one to roll in. And they have crossed the 40 point threshold. <clears throat> One more. Nope. Rebound, Schatzer. Schatzer? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Williams. That's a pretty irresistible thing to do. And that shot will not go for Mullins. It's rebounded by CRA. Two and a half to play. Mullins got some energy, though. There is a baseline jumper that will not go for Colin Luke. First time we've called his name out tonight for the Falcons. Stolen, batted, loose. Finally goes out of bounds off of a white jersey. Playing at the string, 22 point difference in the ball game. And we're just, I well, think we they're just trying to get Well, we won't get the 30 us. now with, with nah. the uh, subs in. No, nah, I think they're just trying to empty the bench now. It's 2.15 to go, 2.14 to go. CRA has got a couple of starters just because they have to. Mobley for three. Got it. A little spark left in the Falcons. Trying to make this 43. look a little trying to make this a little bit more respectable. Looking. Kyle Clodston in the ball game now. Hey, nice. lay up right there for Newman. Yeah. Matt Newman. 64-43. It's been the story all night. RC has been, been able to get inside that lane, slice and dice. And, and, and they've got score. lots of weapons, too. You right. Know, anybody on the team has been their go-to guy. Three-pointer on the way. Go! Nice shot. Mason. Todd Mason with the tray makes it 64-46. Another uh, pass. Palindrome will score. Three in this game. Three in it, huh? I think that's a record. And now that shot from the paint is partially blocked and it's going the other way. Out of bounds, last touch by a white jersey. I'm fairly confident to say that that will be the last palindromial score we'll have. Yes, tonight. it will. Can't happen again with 64 seconds left to play. The only way it could is if uh, they each scored nine points. Actually. Yeah, you're right. Or 11 points. Yes. RCS would have scored nine while CRA would have to score 11. And Not going to happen. We're down under a minute. 45 seconds. We're about to get out of here, folks. And when goes out of bounds, it will be maroon ball. The referees call that red. They don't want to say more than one syllable. Moron. Mar maroon. 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 Skip pass, 30 seconds left. Shot from the paint, not going to go. You ever noticed also that basketball players have, can only have numbers up to whatever a referee can, can signal with one one or two well, hands? in high school and college, yes. In the pros, no. In the pros, it used to be a hard, fast rule at all levels. Right. But, see, they've retired so many numbers in the pros that they're running out of numbers. They had to go ahead and let them go above five. That's a carry. You remember... Um, one of the first players to wear a number like that was, uh, oh gosh, the weirdo. Dennis Rodman. That's the guy, and he wore number 91 for the Chicago Bulls. But, but even in the latter part of his career, what number did he wear for the Lakers? I don't remember. An even weirder number. It was 73, and that's yeah. a final. Yeah, his numbers always added up to 10. Because, right, yeah. right. And we're uh, we're done. We end with a palindromial score. <laughs> we ended on it. That's right. So the final score, 64-46, Ridgefield Christian gets their conference win, uh, conference opener win. Yes. And CRA will make the trip back to Paragould 0-1 in conference play. Now. Two losses and two, day, two nights for the, uh, for the Falcons. Uh, we will be uh, bringing you the – well, we're going to take a quick break here. We will be bringing you the uh, football scores later on. We'll be back on the air tomorrow morning for Double G.
Sports Talk Saturday. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the morning.